Hello, my name is Professor Hudson. You're about to review a narrated PowerPoint lecture on Chapter 3. For this segment, we will continue with our discussion of macromolecules. This segment will focus on Section 3.5, what are proteins, and Section 3.6, what are nucleotides and nucleic acids. Let us begin. Proteins are molecules composed of chains of amino acids. Proteins are polymers of amino acids joined by peptide bonds. All amino acids have a similar structure. All contain amino and carboxyl groups. All have a variable R group. Some R groups are hydrophobic. Some are hydrophilic. And cysteine is an R group found on some amino acids that can form dust sulfide bonds. There are 20 amino acids. All amino acids have the following structure. They have an amino group, a carboxyl group, a variable group, which is the R group, and an hydrogen. The R group is what makes each amino acid different from one another. Some amino acids our body makes. Other amino acids must be obtained from the proteins we eat. If you are a vegetarian, you still need to eat protein in some form in order to get amino acids. You can get protein by eating eggs or eating nuts or eating tofu which is made from soybean if you prefer not to eat meat. Once again like all of the molecules that we've been discussing proteins are formed by the release of two hydrogens and an oxygen to form water. We call this the dehydration or the condensation reaction. This slide is showing some of the amino acids. Notice the R group is what makes each amino acid different from one another. Proteins are made up of amino acids. Proteins have a lot of functions in the body. Our body is built from proteins. They can be structural, such as in hair, nails, scales, feathers. They can play a role in movement, such as in muscle cells. They can play a role in defense, such as antibodies. They can play a role in storage, such as albumin and egg white provides nutrition for the developing embryo. They can play a role in signaling, such as insulin or catalyzing reactions such as amylase is an enzyme which is a protein found in saliva that helps to break down carbohydrates. This image is showing some examples. Protein is found in hair, horns, and silk. They can provide roles as mentioned before such as structural, storage, movement, transport, and enzymes. Proteins are critical to life. A protein can have as many as four levels of structure. The primary structure is the sequence of amino acids linked together in a protein. The secondary structure is a helix or a beta pleated sheet. Tertiary structure refers to complex foldings of the protein chain held together by dulcified bonds. Also hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions. The quaternary structure occurs when multiple protein chains are linked together. When differentiating between these levels of organization within a protein, keep in mind that the primary level is simply the linear sequence of amino acids. 
The secondary structure is where hydrogen bonding can lead to the formation of either a beta pleated sheet or an alpha helix. Tertiary structure is when the protein folds on itself to assume a 3D structure. And quaternary structure refers to multiple proteins bonded together. All proteins will have the primary, secondary, and tertiary structure. Not all proteins have the quaternary level of structure. This slide is just showing an example of a beta pleated sheet. And this makes up silk. Once again, the primary structure is just a linear sequence of amino acids. The secondary structure is either coiling it to form a helix or a beta pleated sheet through hydrogen bonding. Tertiary structure, which is when R groups react with one another, allows the protein to form a 3D structure and fold. And quaternary structure is when multiple folded proteins stick together. When proteins lose their secondary, tertiary, or quaternary structure, they do not function. We call this denatured or denaturation. Strong chemicals such as acids and bases and extreme temperatures can cause a protein to denature. Let's review question 17. The action of disrupting the three-dimensional shape of a protein is termed, choose the correct answer. The three-dimensional shape of a polypeptide is associated with its choose the best answer. And this is question 18. This slide is showing some common examples of protein. Tofu, beans, milk, nuts, eggs and meat. Let's finish chapter 3 by talking about section 3.6 what are nucleotides and nucleic acids. Let's begin. Nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides. This figure is showing what a nucleotide looks like. Examples of nucleic acids include deroxyribonucleic acid, which is DNA, and ribonucleic acid, which is RNA. Nucleotides have a basic structure such that all nucleotides have a phosphate group, a sugar, and a base. In DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose. In RNA, the sugar is ribose. Here is a highlight of a nucleotide, the basic unit for making DNA and RNA. Nucleotides act as energy carriers and intracellular messengers. A nucleic acid that falls into this category is ATP. ATP is the energy currency of the cells. Also, electron carriers such as NAD and FAD fall into this category as well. Here is the structure of a nucleotide. Let us review. To which group of organic compounds do both DNA and RNA belong? Please choose the correct answer and write this answer down for the lecture quiz on Blackboard. Question 20. 
Which is the incorrect association between monomer and polymer? Choose the correct answer. This slide summarizes the four categories of biological molecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Please know examples for each of these categories, functions of these categories, and the monomer or building block that is used to build each category. And this concludes this narrated PowerPoint lecture. With respect to the narrated PowerPoint lecture for chapter 2 and 3, you should have 20 answers for 20 questions written down. You will enter the answers for these 20 questions into the lecture quiz for chapter 2 and 3 on Blackboard. Thank you.